Well, I went to study for a PhD in pharmacology at St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri. And one of the professors, Dr. Lynn Howlett, she was interested in marijuana, how it worked in the brain. And she worked with drugs from Pfizer Drug Company. They made about 50 different types of analogs of THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. And they were developing, trying to develop some drugs that would be analgesic. And um, so we made one into a radioactive form and using that radioactive cannabinoid-like drug called CP55940, we were able to identify a receptor binding site for THC. And that was the first um, time it had ever been done. That was in 1988. What? And then after that, I moved, right after I got that paper done, I got my PhD and got out of St. Louis and moved to Israel and worked with Rafa Mishulam. Well, I thought they have a receptor in the brain, so it's probably some chemical in the brain that binds to that receptor, just like dopamine receptors that um, you know, have dopamine bind to it. Um, the opiates have enkephalins and endorphins bind to the you know, receptor that morphine binds to and stuff. So the first thing to do was to make a new radioactive compound because they weren't commercially available. So we developed a very potent compound called HU243 and using that compound we got it radio labeled with tritium which is a radioactive chemical and as soon as I got that chemical I started to use it to purify out from brain um, fractions that showed activity in the, bind the binding assay we use as a screen for a compounds that would bind to the receptor. And it took two years about to purify an andamide. It's only one part per million. So you have to move a million different things away from the one part. And I only isolated 600 micrograms of it. So it wasn't very much, but it was pretty pure. Well, before that, like a participant at the meeting today was mentioning, in the 70s up through the 80s, everyone who had an assay decided to test THC in their assay, you know? So if you put enough drug in any chemical bioassay, you're gonna get some results, you know? So people were thinking, oh, it makes the membrane too fluid, oh, it's working at dopamine receptors, oh, it's working at noradrenergic receptors or something. So everyone was having all different results. So it wasn't until we identified a specific receptor for cannabinoid drugs that it's opened the door up for a rational way to study the science. We haven't found any um, drugs that are agonists, which mean a drug that stimulates the receptor. We haven't found any that are able to stimulate the receptor without getting people high. So I'm not sure if they'll, I mean it's good for all kinds of um, pain related um, indications, but I think they should just legalize it and let people grow it as they please like they did in Colorado and the state of Oregon in the United States just a few months back in November, I guess it was. Oh, I don't think that would ever come to be. It's rapidly metabolized in the body like it, and I could give it to mice and um, maybe within an hour the drug is all gone, you know. 
indirectly even or directly if a inhibitor is not that would that the phi inhibitors is, oh yeah that might that might be more possible to look at an inhibitor of the enzyme that breaks it down then you'd have more of it in the synaptic cleft you know so that is a perhaps a possibility and they were thinking of using that perhaps in things like autism and stuff Well, they're discovering more and more things about its interaction in the vasculature, in the liver, even, you know, it's not just isolated in the brain anymore. It's like, it's involved in all kinds of different functions in the, from the lungs to the gut. You know, it's like, it's really exploded. I mean, I remember going to a meeting back in 1987 in Australia, in Melbourne, and there were only about 40 people that went to that meeting, maybe. And now we have, I don't know how many people came to this meeting, but it's probably about maybe 150 or 200, maybe. And this is just the European meeting, you know, it's not even an international meeting. So lots more people are in, in the field. And some have made their whole you, career on anandamide. You had sizes. <laughs> yeah. I like making the word up though, that was the most fun part. Ananda is the Sanskrit word for happiness or bliss. So I named it and now it's a word in the lexicon of English. If everything's ready here on the dark side of the moon, play the five tones.